First, we want to turn to New Mexico State University ABC 7 sports reporter Rachel Phillips here to break down what's next for the men's basketball program and what could be in store for head coach Greg Heyer, who is still on paid administrative leave at this time. And we have ABC 7's Kerry Maddox outside of the Pan American Center in Las Cruces, where the NMSU community has been reacting to the news that has shaken the university. But we want to start with the details of that incident report that ABC 7 obtained from New Mexico, New Mexico State University Police. We'll break down those details first. Now, according to the report, one member of the NMSU men's basketball team was hazed in the men's locker room at the Pan American Center in Las Cruces by three other members of the team. The report also says these incidents occurred for six months. And in that report, according to the victim, when the incidents occurred, it would typically happen in front of the entire team and no one else, no other players ever intervened. And finally, we also know that there is a, also the possibility that there is another victim. And immediately following the re release of that police report, NMSU Chancellor Dan Arvizu announcing his decision to suspend operations for the men's basketball program for the remainder of this regular season. And Arvizu said this action was needed after receiving more facts and reviewing reports related to those allegations. Chancellor Arvizu said in part, quote, hazing has no place on our campus and those found responsible will be held accountable for their actions. We must uphold the safety of our students and the integrity of our university. It's time for this program to reset. And now we're going to get into some of the details from the NMSU police report. We want to warn you that some may find the details disturbing. Firstly, police, the police report saying that three players whose names have been redacted from that report have been hazing another player on the team for at least six months inside the locker room at both the Pan Am and at away games. The most recent happening this past Monday. Now, we do want to warn our viewers that some of them might find these details disturbing. According to the police report, the victim told police that three players held him down with his face down, removed his clothing and exposed his buttocks and then hid it. According to the report, the three players also touch his genitals. Another big piece to the story is that the victim told police usually when he was sexually assaulted, it was in front of the rest of the team and nobody intervened. And because he was outnumbered, he felt like he had no choice but to let it happen. The victim choosing not to press charges at this time, but the players could face offenses of one count of false imprisonment, two counts of criminal sexual contact and one count of harassment. The report doesn't state the names of the players. It does say they're all black players. We want to turn now to our very own ABC 7 sports reporter, Rachel Phillips. Rachel, where do things stand right now with the team after that shutdown and these new disturbing details are coming from that police report? Grand Sam, good evening. We know that all of the NMSU coaching staff are on paid leave as of right now, and that includes head coach Greg Heyer. NMSU spokesperson telling me today that as of this stage, he is still the head coach. We'll get into his contract in just a moment, but when we look at the team, we've seen three players so far announce they are leaving the program today. So the addition of Kyle Fight, who out of the trio is the only player who played throughout the season. Following playings, uh, Sh Shahar Lazar and Kent Oliweiler, who announced their intent to leave the program Saturday. Both Fight and Shahar cited that their values no longer align with the program. A program right now still led by Greg Heyer. A lot of people out there, though, thinking he should no longer be in charge due to not only these latest allegations, but also the shooting that happened under his watch on November 19th in Albuquerque, where one of his players, Mike Peake, broke curfew and in an altercation shot and killed a UNM student. That same night, three other players also broke curfew and met up with Peak and took evidence from the scene. I took a look through Coach Greg Heyer's contract under employment duties. It states, quote, Coach recognizes and acknowledges the importance of maintaining and observing the principle of institutional control of every aspect of the program. Within the section on employment duties, it also states that, quote, Coach must faithfully perform the customary duties as head coach, including managing and supervising the program. Whether the university believes Hire has lived up to the duties in his contract or failed to meet them is yet to be seen. The Board of Regents is set to have a closed meeting at 5 p.m. on Tuesday. It's unclear if that meeting will discuss the NMSU basketball team, but on the agenda is discussing limited personnel matters concerning individual NMSU employees and the discussion of personally identifiable, identifiable information about individual NMSU students. Now, I'm told by an NMSU spokesperson that decisions regarding termination cannot be made in a closed door meeting and only in an open meeting. But a spokesperson told me that when it comes to the termination of coaches, 
or other athletic personnel, the regents would probably not need to be involved at all. And Chancellor Dan Arvizu could make that determination on his own. Coming up in sports, we'll look at just how detrimental this situation is to the future of the program. For now, Rosemary and Sam, back to you. Rachel, thank you so much for breaking all of that down for us. And as we learn more about these allegations, the community surrounding NMSU is reacting today. We have ABC 7's Carrie Mannix breaking the news to people in Las Cruces. She joins us live with our New Mexico Mobile Newsroom from the NMSU campus with what they have to say. Carrie. Well, Sam, NMSU fans will not see another basketball play game played here at the Pan American Center or anywhere else for the remainder of this season because of those serious assault allegations made by one of the team's players against three of his very own teammates. Oh my God, that's absolutely awful. Nobody should ever be touched in any way that's inappropriate. That's insane. Community members in shock after hearing of the alleged sexual assault of an NMSU basketball player by three of his teammates. Something the unnamed victim told police happened multiple times in front of the rest of the team with no intervention from other players. I don't think that would be the right thing to do. I think they should have intervened and uh, said something about it, definitely. If nobody was willing to help this one person, they're their teammate. That person, even if they weren't their teammate, they should have been protected by these men. Most people I spoke to agree with the program's suspension. I think it should be taken seriously, you know, and uh, it shouldn't be allowed, uh, you know, stuff like that going on anymore. But everyone agrees they should wait for all the facts to be released. I want to know the real reason, you know, like um, what actually happened, if that's true or not. I think it should be maybe on an individual basis, find out what they, each of the people on the team knew about it, stuff like that, before they suspend the whole team. I mean, this is America. Everybody is innocent until proven guilty. Uh, I think the suspension while they're investigating is absolutely understandable. If it turns out that nothing happened, uh, which it, it's hard to believe that that's the case with such a horrible allegation. But of course, I mean, we still have due process in this country. Lots of input today, but of course, this is still an ongoing investigation and we'll bring you updates on it as they come, both on air and online at KVIA.com. But for now, reporting live in Las Cruces with our New Mexico Mobile Newsroom, I'm Carrie Mannix, ABC7.